Hey everyone, now that the official 1.1 patch notes are out, I wanted to quickly go over it, especially because there's one huge change coming with this update. Alright, let's start off with the big news. If you see here at the update time, it is saying that the update will begin on November 11th, 2020 at 6 a.m. UTC plus 8 and it will take about 5 hours. There is nothing here that states it's based on your server time as well as if you look at the in-game notices. You'll see here for myself it says that it's on November 10th, 2020, 3 p.m. and it will take about 5 hours. I'm in the North American server at UTC minus 7, which is why this states 3 p.m. for myself. Hopefully my assumption that the 1.1 update is going to be at a universal launch time as well as the banners as that would be great for content creators but also players alike as we can all enjoy the new content at the same time rather than with the Klee banner and the Crucible event that we had previously where we had to wait 7 or 15 hours to be able to play the new content. Now let's quickly go over the other patch notes that we covered previously in our other video, but how to update the game on PC, you're going to close the game and open the launcher. If you are not playing the game through the launcher, you have to go and run the game through launcher.exe when the servers go down to update your game. iOS and Android will have to go to their respective app store and update the game. PS4, you'll highlight Genshin Impact on the PS4 home screen, press the option button on your controller, then select check for update. As for compensation, they'll be giving us 300 Primo Gems for the 5 hours that the server goes down and an additional 60 Primo Gems for every extra hour that the server is down. And in addition, they'll be giving us more Primo Gems because of all the inaccurate descriptions they've had in the game for like Archaic Petra, the Instructor Set, etc, etc. To be eligible for those bonus Primo Gems, you will have to be Adventure Rank 5 by the time the servers do go down and you will have about three days to log in to be able to get the rewards. If you do not log in within those three days, you will not get those rewards. And if you do have the rewards in your mail, you have 30 days to claim them. Now onto the meat and potatoes of the 1.1 patch notes of what we can expect. We're going to be getting the character's child and Diona first, and it's going to be available from version 1.1 update going live all the way up until around December 1st. Here it states 1559.59 server time. But what's weird is that in the in-game notices, it states December 1st, 1359 for myself. And that doesn't quite make sense as that's a two hour difference from what the website says and what the in-game notices say. Unless for some reason the website is based on my server time. And for those that don't know, the rate of four stars on the child banner is going to be Diona, Beidou, and Ningguang. It states here the test run trial character event will be available from after the update until the same time that the banner ends and once you finish it you will re receive the corresponding rewards. Don't be fooled, the corresponding rewards are not these characters down here. It will be what's listed on the test run per usual with like the primo gems, the books, and the enhancement stones. The characters of Zhongli and Xinyan will not be available at the start of 1.1 but they will be available on their very own banner after the child banner ends. The weapon banner at 1.1 will be the banner that has the Memory of Dust 5 star Geo Catalyst that will also run alongside the Skyward Heartbow on a Raid Up weapon banner. This banner will last the same duration as the child banner from version 1.1 all the way until around December 1st. The other Geo 5-star weapons of the Polearm and the Claymore will not be available until Zhongli and Xinyan's banner, which makes sense because Zhongli is a Polearm user and Xinyan is a Claymore user. The Royal Spear 4-star Polearm, which was not featured in the October Starglitter shop because the Black Cliff Spear was featured instead, will now be featured in the November Starglitter shop. This is kind of weird because the Black Cliff Pole is featured in October and November while the Royal Pole will only be featured in November. I wonder if that was like a mistake on their end and they're just putting it in now. Alright, and now for those that don't know what Child and Diona and the new Geo weapons do, we'll be quickly going over those with our friend Fenris's translated guide. For Child, he's going to have uh, three types of debuffs which you'll be able to apply with your charge bow attack, your bow burst skill, or your melee auto attacks. Child is going to have two different forms, bow form and blade form. You're going to be able to change through each of them with their elemental skill. And apparently the longer you are in the blade form and the melee stance, the longer your elemental skill cooldown will become once you switch back to bow form. If this does end up becoming true, it's going to be very interesting to see how cooldown reduction artifacts or weapons will affect his gameplay. 
When in bow form, his burst skill or his ultimate will shoot out an enchanted arrow causing hydro damage and it applies the debuff on the target generating hydro elemental particles as a bonus. In blade form, he'll attack in a wide area causing powerful hydro damage to the enemies and if they have a debuff on it, on them, it will proc it and cause a hydro explosion. His first ascension talent will be that his debuffs last 8 seconds longer before they disappear, and his ascension 4 talent will be that while in blade form, critical attacks inflict broken flow or the debuff on enemies. This is going to be really interesting, especially because Child's fourth stat as he ascends is that he gains crit rate for every ascension level. Now for his passive, he increases the normal attack level of all party members by 1, which is an interesting support and main DPS skill, but I'm not too sure how well that's going to play as you don't really auto attack with your other team members if you use main DPS. Now for Diona, we're just going to quickly briefly go over a few things about her. For her elemental skill or E skill, if you hold it down, she'll dash back quickly and fire 5 cryo kid claws and generate a shield. Uh, when you tap it, it'll do a brief, a, basically the same thing except you will not dash backwards. Her burst skill will be that she tosses out a AoE radius where it'll deal cryo damage and heal units within it as well as deal cryo damage to the enemies in it. Some of her constellations include at constellation 4, her charge arrow time will be reduced with, by 60% when she's within her own burst skill. And at constellation 6, her healing will be increased when your units are below 50% HP, but if they're above 50% HP, they'll get a bunch of elemental mastery. For those that do end up with Constellation 6, it could be very interesting as her burst skill will deal continuous cryo damage to enemies within the field, allowing you to do a tons of elemental reactions. For Zhongli and Qinyan, we'll be going over them in a later video as we have basically all the skills and talents and constellations of Zhongli and as well as for Xinyan. And for those that don't know about the new 5 star weapons, they are the Catalyst, the Polearm, and the Claymore with main stat attack percent and high base attack, with the passives all being the same. The passive is that it increases the strength of shields by 20% or powerful shield stat line for 8 seconds after hitting an enemy, increases attack by 4% up to 5 stacks, can be triggered once every 0.3 seconds while being protected by a shield, any shield strengthens the attack percent buff by 100%, in theory around 40% attack increase with a shield and max stacks. This shield could be any shield, such as a crystallized shield from a geo reaction, or maybe a shield that you get from a character's skill or passive, or any other shield. Now back to the patch notes. We're going to get some new Archon quests, new story quests, and new world quests. The new world quests will be those blue exclamation mark quests that are optional to do. And for the event, we'll be getting the Unreconciled Stars event, which will start on November 16th and last for two weeks, all the way until approximately November 30th. During this event, you'll be able to do various tasks to be able to get character ascension materials, hero's wit, mystic enhancement or talent enhanced materials, crown of insight, and a free official. The gliding challenge event and the while it's warm event will come at a later date. And for these new systems, we'll be getting the C city reputation system, which will start at adventure rank 25. If you guys don't know about that system, check out my reputation guide video. The reputation system will basically have you do various tasks so that you can get reputation level and get blueprints, name cards, recipes, gliders, etc. In 1.1 they'll be adding the exploration progression system where you could just basically zoom out on your map and you can see how much completion you have finished in each region or each zone. They're adding the archive system which is an encyclopedia system for those that are collectors or completionists. And gameplay wise they'll be adding a couple recipes to the restaurants to purchase for Mora but who really uses food. And then setting wise you'll be able to change your controller keybinds and your keyboard keybinds and they'll have a few more graphic options where you'll be able to change the amount of fog reflections, bloom, crowd density, co-op teammate effects because there's so many particle effects going on during your teammate gameplay. And for new options for camera settings, they'll be having cam combat camera settings and default camera's distance settings. And for the system side, they will be adding the feature to a lock equipment and f artifacts finally. And they'll have a report system for co-op for all those dirty bad cheaters. And as an extra bonus, it does appear that the next Battle Pass weapons have also been revealed where it will be the Fading Star Battle Pass with the same exact Battle Pass weapons we just had for 1.0. It will carry over to the 1.1 Battle Pass. And it also appears that in version 1.1, we will be able to get another free Barbara. If you had already re received Barbara in 1.0, you'll be able to get another Barbara for free. While if you have never received a Barbara, you will get one starting at Adventure Rank 18 versus Adventure Rank 20 from before. 
And this is what the character banner is going to be looking like from the official Genshin Impact Twitter. This does mean that the Venti leak that I posted about recently is going to be fake, sadly. So Venti will not be returning for this iteration. And this is what the weapon banner looks like here with the Sky Harp bow and the Geo Catalyst. And the rate of 4 star weapons will be the Rust Bow, the Flute, the Favonius Lance, the Eye of Perception, and the Rain Slasher. This does kind of mean that the Rust Bow will also be working for Child. That's going to be it for this video. Sorry this video is a little bit sloppier than usual. I just wanted to brush this content out for you guys so you guys knew what to expect in the next few days. If you guys did enjoy the video, please do leave a like, comment down below if you think that the updates will be universal for everybody or if that was just a translation error. Please subscribe for more Genshin Impact content. Join the Discord to be part of our Genshin Impact community. Follow me on Twitch to discuss these things live. And follow my socials for short, quick updates and infographics. See you guys later. Bye.